incomplete dominance is a special type of dominance that does apply to certain genes. When we have incomplete dominance, incomplete dominance is a very specific type of dominance that applies to just specific genes. When we have this, what this means is that neither allele dominates Or in other words, neither allele covers up the other. So there's not going to be a true dominant, a true recessive allele. This means that we are going to get a phenotype that shows the presence of both alleles if both of them are there. So that would be if we're looking at the heterozygous individual. If we consider that we might have two different alleles, say a big A and a lowercase a, well the combinations of those we could have like capital A, capital A, we could have heterozygous, we could have the two lowercase a's. Each one of these three is going to have a different look. So this might have um, look number one, this would have look number two, and this would have look number three. So three different appearances, three different phenotypes that we would get from these same two alleles just depending on the combination that the individual has. If we look at a specific example, hair texture in humans is one of these. And we have two alleles, you can call them capital A and lowercase a. If we get two copies of one of them, we're gonna have straight hair. So notice that this picture shows straight hair. If we get two copies of the lowercase, then that individual has curly hair, like we see down here. But if we happen to be heterozygous, we get one of each and we're going to have wavy hair. So three different textures to the hair depending on the combination of the two alleles that we have. Neither one is really the dominant allele or the recessive allele because again that doesn't matter if we're going to see the effects of both of them, which is what we see in the wavy individual. If we look at a cross involving incomplete dominance, here I've got two wavy haired individuals. So since they both have wavy hair, they're going to be heterozygous. And when we do the cross, the genetics of it, the Punnett square, is going to work out essentially the same way because this is going to be my square. We've got one box that has um, homozygous, capital A. We have two boxes that are going to be heterozygous, and we can see those there. And then we have one box that's got the two copies of lowercase a. But when we look at these, we are going to have one individual right here that actually has straight hair. So that would be a quarter of our offspring. We're going to have two here that exhibit wavy. Okay, so that would be half of them. And then we've got one box which is going to give us curly, so quarter. Notice that the phenotypic ratio is going to be different compared to the typical complete dominant crosses. If we were looking at the phenotypic ratio, we count up how many we have of each one, We've got one straight, we've got two wavy, and we've got one curly. So the phenotypic ratio here is going to be one to two to one when we are looking at the monohybrid crosses involving complete dominance we're going to have a phenotypic ratio of three to one